The premiers, conservative premiers specifically, are misleading Canadians. The conservative opposition in Ottawa and Pierre Polyev are not telling the truth to Canadians. And I emphasize the, the importance of spiking the hike and axing the tax. A tax hike that will make it harder for people to eat, heat, and house themselves. That's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and Conservative leader Pierre Polyev going back and forth this week over the federal carbon tax or price on carbon. It's set to increase tomorrow. As we've been talking about this morning, the policy has become an increasingly contentious issue at a time when the federal government continues to face sliding popularity and public opinion polling. And both sides are accusing the other of misleading Canadians. How might this issue continue to play out politically? The Scrum is here to dig into that. Robert Fife is the Ottawa Bureau Chief with the Globe and Mail. Now, Judah Amelie's reports on the economy for the Canadian press and Robert Bensey is the Queen's Park Bureau Chief for the Toronto Star. Hi everybody. Uh, Rob, I'll, I'll start with you. Look, this is a debate that's been going on for months if not years, but the past few weeks have been have seen particularly heightened rhetoric. Who comes out politically ahead do you think on this one? Well, I mean, presumably Pierre Polyev's Conservatives come out ahead, Vashi, because they've been hammering the drum that all of the ills that you face at the grocery store or the gas pump are because of the carbon tax. And inevitably, uh, gas prices will rise on April 1st, not just because the carbon price has gone up from $65 a ton to $80 a ton, but it's just because it's a holiday Monday in much of the country and, and gas prices tend to go up on holiday weekends. Uh, here in Toronto, in the last two weeks, they fluctuated between $1.46 a litre and $1.70 a litre. So, I, I expect them to be higher on Monday just because of that. But, but then the Tories will then say it's all because of the carbon price. The Liberals will say, no, you're getting a rebate. But I think the Liberals are losing the argument right now. Yeah, I think uh, Rob sort of summed up, Bob, there how the issue is being framed. Either if you listen to the Conservatives, it is responsible for basically all of your affordability challenges. If you listen to the Liberals, it's responsible for absolutely none of your affordability challenges. Where do you think Canadians fall in that spectrum? Well, I think the, the, the Liberal government undercut their own message when they exempted home heating fuel for Atlantic Canada and then extended it to other parts of the country uh, because of the affordability issue for Atlantic Canadians and guess what, uh, from the Liberal MPs who were worried about uh, the political noise and backlash they were getting from their constituents. So uh, the whole issue that this carbon tax is, is a great thing for the environment and you're getting money back, well that, that was thrown out the window when it came to home heating fuel and they lost the argument on that and the, the difficulty they have is they're fighting a war on many other fronts as well. There's a housing crisis, there is an immigration crisis, they're demand, they're, you know, our allies are saying you're not spending any money on national defense, in fact spending is going down. Uh, the whole issue of affordability, so I, I just don't see a way out for the government, even though, uh, you know, they have had uh, the majority of economists in this country saying that car, uh, carbon tax is a, is a good tax overall for the environment and people do get re re rebates back, but this is one I think they've lost. I think Bob hits the nail on the head in pointing out, look, I think there are a lot of facts on the government side when it comes to their carbon pricing program. But they bent first, they acquiesced, they decided that the stringency of their program could be impacted by their own decision. And they almost it, like brought on the response from the, pre how could they not have anticipated what those premiers would say? That's exactly it. I mean, I think I think they, as Bob said, they're fighting so many different wars at the same time right now. And you got to remember that this pressure about the carbon tax really uh, boiled to this point after a massive affordability crisis, after inflation rose, and the Liberals found themselves a bit scrambling about how you de how do you deal with this situation and caved. Um, but right now, you know, Pierre Polyev has managed to maintain a really impressive lead uh, up until now. And traditionally, if you're in opposition, um, you're not the one who has to answer questions. But given where he is right now, the question is being turned to him on, okay, so what are you gonna do if there's no, if there's no carbon tax? That's the question the Prime Minister also mm -hmm. posed to 
opposed to the premiers. And um, you look at what, how Pierre Polyev responded to 200 economists uh, signing a letter uh, in support of the carbon tax. He called them so-called experts. Uh, and, and that's something he's done before. It's similar to his language around gatekeepers. Uh, and and that, can, that can work in the, with his populist base. But uh, as time goes on, people will have questions on, do you actually want to do anything about climate change? And so, yes, as of right now, the Liberals have maintained, stayed as the losers on the carbon tax discussion. But there's a risk here for the Conservatives, too, if this is if this is the path forward for them. Well, that's what I think will become very interesting, because Monday, Rob, will come and go. And this, this sort of heightened level of debate has been all in the lead up to Monday. But, uh, you know, in the in the months and maybe 18 months and, or 16 months until the next election, election, if it does happen in the fall of 2025, you know, the the sort of context that both Bob and Najud refer to around affordability could maybe change, but it also could maybe not. Well, exactly, Vashi. I mean, inflation is down to 2.8 percent. So it's getting back down there. I mean, remember, this time last year, it was more than double that. So so I think it's 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 important for context. The problem I think that the government has is that it, it starts to get baked in. I mean, I think there's almost a, a sense of inevitability of the defeat of the Liberals in October 2025, which is when I believe the next election will be. And that's really hard unless they could change leaders. If, if Mr. Trudeau leaves, then I think you could see uh, uh, them perhaps rebound somewhat because all of the anger that Mr. Polyev has directed toward the Liberal government, it tends to be personalized toward Mr. Trudeau. And I think if you, if they had a different leader, let's say it's Melanie Jolie or Christia Freeland or Mark Carney or, or uh, Champagne, someone like that, then it might be a different vibe. I'm not saying that they can save uh, the, the government, but they might save the furniture so they don't get a 1993 style wipeout as happened when Brian Mulroney stayed too long. Kim Campbell came in. Bob knows. Bob wrote a book about Kim Campbell. Uh, and they were wiped out in 1993 to down to two seats from a majority government to two seats. That's uh, that's not I don't think that's going to happen to the liberals, but you never know. I just don't get the sense, Bob, particularly from the way in which the prime minister was commuting, communicating, pardon me, in the last week on this issue, you know, firing the letter back. Like he, he seems more going fight for fight. I'm not you know that the, the merits of that can be debated or the content of what he's saying. But he doesn't seem like he is shying away from from the fight. Oh, no, no. I mean, uh, this week was great. I mean, you saw him out there almost every day, fired up. In fact, I haven't seen him that fired up for quite a, a long time. And, uh, you know, they're, we've got a budget coming, and they're doing a whole bunch of budget announcements now before the budget. Uh, I don't even know why we're going to go in for the budget lockup <laughs> since they're going to announce everything. But he's trying to do everything he can to get to win over Canadians. But it's, I think it's, I really think it's a losing battle for him. It's been nine years in office. People are tired of him. Look at the, look at the large crowds turning out for Mr. Pauly of like thousands of people showing up. And, but I do agree with Rob. If, if uh, Mr. Trudeau was to step down and, and he, who knows, maybe he, he will by the summertime or early fall if he realizes it's, he's toast. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can then count out the Liberal Party. Uh, a change in leadership can make a difference. I don't anticipate, though, as we do look ahead to how the carbon debate in particular evolves, Najud, that the Conservatives back off the messaging. Partic like, I mean, the shirts will remain, axe the tax. I think it resonated beyond maybe even their populist base. I was sitting on the plane next to somebody the other day who was a progressive from New Brunswick, but like was like, oh, yeah, Trudeau's done because of the carbon tax. Like, it's, it is sort of, it has struck a chord for whatever reason. Because of an affordability crisis, yeah. right? So you have you have the cost of everything go up, go up, and you have Pierre probably have come out and tell you, well, the cost of everything has gone up because of the carbon tax. Uh, I, you know, it, it resonates with people who are now sick of this government, as, as you know, Bob and Robert b both brought up, is that you know people are just tired of this government. But again, I would say that you know with the conservatives maintaining this lead they're going to have to answer more questions and canadians are going to look to them for yeah. what are you going to do to make my life better because the reality is we know that eliminating the carbon tax isn't going to help with the housing crisis people aren't going to be making more money because you eliminated the carbon tax and so pierre polyev knows that and he's going to have to have something else to present to canadians beyond just axing the tax okay i'm going to leave it there thank you everyone thanks to our scrum najud amalise bob fife and rob benzi after the break the three things i'm watching for next week stay tuned